Destiny humans, you know I love a white-based aggressive strategy, so I'm already on board. Double Qs, which I love. That's just so much magic all at once. It reminds me of me in my <laughs> 20s. But on the other side of things, we have Yuta Takahashi, reigning defending world champion, playing what he knows best in an it strategy. He loves cantripping. He feels great and historic. This is his kind of deck and his kind of format. I'm very excited to watch these games unfold. Likewise, and I am super excited to see this Lesnar Humans deck do its thing this weekend because I've played this a little bit before the event. And let me tell you what Paul and Marshall were saying about it have sticking power, it being resilient. Even if you wipe the board, this deck is coming back with a vengeance. And what an ideal start here for Arya, getting Esper Sentinel down on the battlefield. Now I'm gonna ask you, Cedric, it's a very personal question. Do you pay your taxes? I'm gonna plead the fifth on that and focus on the game in front of us. Thank you. Esper Sentinel tax, friend. Well, I'll pay the tax on that. Well, sometimes I suppose. So Takahashi <laughs> here with his is it his is it Phoenix build. No surprise that he's playing the strategy. We of course know the fantastic run that he had through the world championships with Is It Dragons then. Now he is playing Is It Phoenix. Again, no surprise if you follow his career. One thing I took a look at with his deck list, especially in this matchup Ailey, is how much removal does he have? Mm -hmm. You saw a flame bless bolt there, take care of the sentinel and pay the tax on that. You're seeing expressive iteration resolve here. This kind of stray copy of Mystical Dispute hanging out in the main deck, sure. Consider Mountain, some things to consider, pardon the pun. But as far as removal is concerned, Ailey, he's got plenty of it. On Holy Heat, Flame Bless Bolt has a main deck copy of Brazen Borrow. More importantly, that's a copy of Petty Theft. And even a copy of Ether Gust, which you would think against this Lesnar deck wouldn't be that good, does kind of delay Collected Company or Hamlet Vanguard. So he is ready for this matchup in my estimation. Just gotta hope that the top of the library agrees with you there, Cedric, but uh, does have Faithless Looting, a very key card for him in this archetype, being able to get rid of things, stick some stuff in the bin if you need it. We see Ox of Agonis there that can come back as soon as that graveyard is full enough. Unholy Heat, as you mentioned, key piece of removal. Close to Delirium already, just needs two more card types in the bin in order to do six damage against the bigger creatures like the Adeline Resplendent Cathar. On the other side of things though, Arya's not looking super hot with his hand. Ideally would have some, you know, cheaper two drops, maybe a one drop even. It's just a handful of threes at the moment. Yeah, if you're Arya, you'd love to go one, two, three as far as the mana curve is concerned. Did start things off with an Esper Sentinel. No two drop, ideally Thalia Guardian of Thraven would slot in there nicely, but plenty of three drops as you did mention. Adeline is a very powerful card in this matchup because of four toughness. It puts a lot of stress on Unholy Heat to have Delirium. But as you see with the Brazen Borrower draw there, that's the kind of card that can delay the Adeline a little bit until you do get closer to Delirium. So that draw step may not seem great right now for Takahashi, but it's better than it appears on the surface. For sure. And considering that's a one of copy in the main deck, you know, you're pretty happy to see that to just prevent Adeline from basically pooping out a bunch of little one ones that's what she does best and yeah uh, it, makes combat just, fun <laughs> you just want to keep that thing off the battlefield for as long as you can because it does get huge very very quickly and that four toughness does make it somewhat difficult to kill however as far as turning on delirium is concerned it's not hard for this deck to do and faithless mm -hmm. looting is a big reason for that yep and uh takahashi just taking a look at the cards in hand here making sure he discards the right cards here. Can he get Delirium now? We shall see shortly. As it looks like Ox of Agonis and the second copy of Flame Bless Bolt are going to be put into the graveyard. Let's see. Do we have it? Yeah, land drop not a concern. Okay. This is a pretty good start here for Takahashi. Yeah, having the information that we do, I would say certainly advantage goes to Takahashi in the early stages of this matchup. Yeah. This hand hasn't really come together for Arya. The three clunky one drops, oh, excuse me, three drops. We got the brutal Cathars. They're ready to snipe a birdie out the sky, but uh, yeah, kind of need uh, Takahashi to do something first. He's taken a very reactive stance at this point. And that's exactly what I meant with that petty theft there. It's not the best card in the matchup, but it does kind of delay the inevitable to be able to bounce the Adeline. Mm -hmm. Do a little action here with Consider, grow a bigger graveyard, get you one step closer to Delirium. And now Crackling Drake is the kind of card that you can play as kind of just a boom. Here's a huge <laughs> issue for you right now. And it can also, of course, kill the opponent very, very quickly if Takahashi yeah. wants to go this route. So this is so his style of deck. And given that it's well positioned here and his draw has been good thus far in game number one, I think the advantage is for him slightly thus far. Oh, very much. 
And uh, we know uh, Takahashi is quite fond of the dragons. I know Crackling Drake isn't technically a dragon, but it's a big flappy thing in the Izzet colors. So it's an honorary dragon for the weekend here. Yeah, it certainly will be for him. And it's a darn <laughs> good one, too. Entering the battlefield, drawing a card thing is absolutely enormous. Kills opponents mm -hmm. very, very quickly. Thing I like about this Izzet Phoenix build that Takahashi has brought this weekend, along with many others, is the deck has some serious closing speed. It can get mm. games over with very quickly. Yeah, it certainly can. So Crackling Drake is going to be the play here. You can see he deliberated there a little bit. Wasn't too sure if it was time to remove Adeline or present his own threat on the battlefield. Ops to go for the Crackling Drake, but Arya is ready, poised, and waiting. Brittle Cathar comes on down. It is now daytime. But no second spell here to follow up. Just going to swing in here with Adeline and the 1-1 one -one that she creates. So this turn for Takahashi is going to be a real doozy because one, we've got Delirium online, right? So the ability to kill Brutal Cathar, maybe mid-combat, maybe not, we'll see. So first of all, that can get your Crackling Drake back. You can play a <laughs> Crackling Drake. You saw Takahashi last turn when he drew that, that pathway, gave himself a little bit of a head nod of, okay, that's a really good draw step for me because yeah. now I can kill something, still have mana up to kill something else and play another Crackling Drake. This is, uh, this is a turn. Yeah. This is a turn. That's one way to describe it. This is bad news for Arya at this moment because that are, those are two 7-4 flyers in the air there. And Yuta Takahashi has a couple more spells he can go to. Also has the copy of Arclight Phoenix that, surprise, surprise, you can actually hard cost. So we could just be looking at lethal here, but Brutal Cathar is going to do his best to prevent that. Yeah, a, a temporary slowdown here. Here comes Adeline as well. Going to get in for, it looks like, one point of damage. Again... Uh, let's make it two, pardon me. You'll see a quick block here. So I was correct. One, numbers, <laughs> doing it. But this is this is what I love for Takahashi here this weekend. Knowing that Slicing Humans was going to be a... Pr well, I guess I'll say knowing is an incorrect word. Having an assumption that Slicing Humans would be very popular, he loaded up with spot. Oh, yeah. And I mean, lo and you're seeing it this game, those Flame Blessed Bolts on Holy Heats. We saw the Petty Theft. We haven't seen the Aether Gust work itself into the equation yet. We may not but he came very much prepared to beat this strategy and it's mm -hmm. working out beautifully for him because he has drawn a lot of removal. Oh, there we go. <laughs> There's two 10 10s or yeah, two 10 uh, power creatures. Unfortunately, the one doesn't have haste, so he's just going to have to hang out. But that is uh. half of Arya's life total. Just wow, gone. And this is the closing speed that I'm talking about because Takahashi is sitting at a very comfortable 15. You can go towards Oxfagonus, discard the grip, draw a couple more cards, maybe the ability to return a Phoenix here in just a moment, depending on what you peel. Consider says absolutely. <laughs> this is this is getting a little outrageous, folks. Oh my goodness me. Two attacks we go in for 13. Arclight Phoenix getting in on the action. Down to seven goes Arya. Another brutal Cathar. They're doing their best, but that's not going to be enough against three flyers. So let's Go to game number two. Now, Cedric, a lot of us were a little bit surprised to see that Selesnya Humans was as popular as it was. Why do you think that it's, you know, the majority of the decks brought to this weekend, the most popular, has been this this archetype? Well, it's a really powerful deck, and these white cards in this deck are, are quite powerful as well. Thraven Inspector is a really good card. Thalia's, be it Thalia Guardian Thraven or Thalia's Lieutenant, very powerful card. Esper Sentinel, very, very powerful card. And we can't undersell the power of collected company as mm -hmm. well. So there's a lot of good reasons to be playing the strategy. It's very straightforward. It kills the opponent very, very quickly. Some of the cards allow your, some of the cards, excuse me, allow you to draw cards, Esper Sentinel, or stop your opponent from doing things, Thalia Guardian of Thraven. So there's a lot of things to like about this, but I will say this. If you believe this is gonna be the most played deck, you can prepare against it because at the end of the day, it's just a lot of creatures. <laughs> and this is coming from someone who loves a lot of creatures. If someone is paying attention to, hey, your deck is pretty straightforward, it is powerful in this Slicing Humans deck, but at the end of the day, it's just a bunch of bozos, I can play a lot of removal, like Takahashi is this weekend, and prepare accordingly. And as you'll see with the sideboarding here from Takahashi, what's he bringing in, Ailey? More removal! <laughs> More removal! Like a lot of removal! <laughs> that seems to be the go-to there. See a cheeky Culligan's Command as well. To be brought in there, sweltering suns, the board wipe effects, even dual shot. I absolutely love this. I had a good chuckle when I saw that. I was like, that's very clever because there's a bunch of one toughness little knuckleheads, as you like to call them, in the Selesny humans deck. So he's just looking good. And the, and the tough thing here, too, is if you think about maybe standard, right? Some of the rule spells, they're two mana, they're three mana, they're four mana, depending on which ones you're thinking of, right? 
And so if you're an aggressive strategy, you think to yourself, well, my one drop or my two drop is going to trade as far as mana cost wise for your three mana removal spell, your four mana removal spell. That's favorable exchange for me. What you're seeing here in this particular format is Takahashi's removal spells, they cost one mana for your one mana threats, or they cost one mana, and I'm thinking about Unholy Heat, for your three mana threats. So the exchange as far as mana efficiency is concerned is actually favorable for Takahashi as far as I'm going to kill your threat with a one mana spell repeatedly, which is another reason I think this matchup is pretty darn good for him because his removal is so cheap. Yeah, it is. Speaking of removal, Flame Blast Bolt and Unholy Heat available for him. Doesn't want to give Aria the card here as he won't be able to pay for that tax of Esper Sentinel. So it's going to pass the turn back, just dropping a land. And uh, let's see where Aria can go from here. It's not a bad start here for Aria. You see Thraven Inspector, create a clue, Esper Sentinel, kind of type your mana a little bit. Do you want to pay the tax? Do you not want to pay the tax? Again, here, com here comes a very simple and straightforward attack. Looks like we're going to play Hamlet's Vanguard, perhaps post-combat. But you see Takahashi, three one-mana removal spells in hand. The world's kind of his oyster right now. He can kind of make a decision on, eh, maybe I'll take the damage, maybe I won't take the damage. Okay, I'll spike field hazard. Do I want to pay? Probably. So no card coming your way, whatever. He, he kind of has the initiative as far as decision-making is concerned and how he wants to play his turns, which is not the spot you want to be in when you're an aggressive player. Just the one point of damage there for Arya, and we're going to follow up here with a Hamlet Vanguard. So it's a, it's it's just a 3-3 three, three at this point. It can get really, really big, though. So uh, let's uh, let's see if it shows up to the party this weekend for the Selesnya decks that included it. But importantly, it does have Ward 2, so even more taxes, as Expressive Iteration here is on the stack for Takahashi. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that Ward 2, because that does play a role here again. Esper Sentinel kind of has a weird version of Ward. Not really, of course, but, you know, you get to draw a card <laughs> if they don't pay. But Hamlet Vanguard actually does have Ward, and it's a three toughness creature right now, which is kind of messing things up a little bit right now here for Takahashi. So as we head back Arya's way, it looks like these creatures are going to get even larger thanks to Athalia's Lieutenant. Nice. Athalia's Lieutenant enters the battlefield, dunks a 1-1 counter on each human, and then gets chunkier with each human that enters the battlefield thereafter. So... Now's a good time to fire off one of these removal spells. Flame Blessed Bolt is going to take care of the only target it can hit in the Thraven Inspector. And Hamlet Vanguard is now 4-4 and it's going to start chipping away at the life total here of Takahashi. Yeah, Vanguard coming in for toughness. Again, remember a key kind of flashpoint in this matchup until Unholy Heat is turned on. It's not that mm -hmm. hard to turn Unholy Heat on, but thus far, there's only two types in the graveyard, so it's not on just yet. Yeah, so a little bit of an awkward spot to be in for Takahashi. Looking at Expressive Iteration, see if we can dig a little deeper there. Does have the Brazen Borrower, could bounce the Hamlet Vanguard and pay for the ward. But he's going to go for Expressive Iteration, so let's see what he's looking at here on top of the library. Likes what he power. sees, a little bit yeah, of a head shake there. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. You saw the head not there from Takahashi up at the top of the top left hand corner of the screen clearly he likes what he's looking at we'll find out what those cards are here in just a moment looks like i consider faithless looting has worked itself into the equation oh, i wonder why he likes faithless looting that's strange oh i don't know maybe <laughs> that's, that's that's weird it's just two birds that like to hang out in the graveyard that's, neat, that's all a neat card yeah it's kind of nice you know just casual three spells let's just kill some stuff and then i'm gonna start hitting you and now as they say, the race is on. Gotta crack a clue. Curious what this draw <laughs> step's gonna be. Esper Sentinel, not so great right now. Need something like a collective company to show up here for Arya. I mean, need oh, yeah. a big, heavy hitter. It's not that Skyclave Apparition's bad, but it's not great. And it looks like, oddly enough, we're gonna see these Arclight Phoenixes hang back oh. on defense. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so no no smacks there from uh, the Arclight Phoenix. Skyclave Apparition is gonna come on down and get rid of one of them. And the other Arclight Phoenix is gonna jump in the way here of Hamlet Vanguard. So... Yuta Takahashi valuing his life and using these birds defensively. Let's see what this draw step is. Oh. Okay, so Crackling Drake. Well, we, we know that's 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 a big O. We saw that last game. Mm -hmm. And we know how effective that can be at just roadblocking anything that's going on. Forces Arya to have a removal spell right away or can't really profitably attack. So Takahashi's got some things to think about this turn. Esper Sentinel did just come down. Taxing a consider or a petty theft. Okay, sure. That is what it is. But how do you want to take this turn? Because you have the options of petty thefting something, flashbacking faithless looting, multiple copies of consider, Ox of Agone is probably the last thing that you want to do on this particular turn. But there are a lot of options here for the Rain World Champion. I'm curious to see which route he elects to go. Well, 
As you've always said, Cedric, easy, easy pot out the way first, maybe? Get sulfur falls down? Obstacle for consider. Would you like to pay the tax? The answer is yes, okay. Sure, okay. Ooh, and hit a bird off the top of the library, I think. So consider got another uh, phoenix into the graveyard. Okay. What else we got on top there? Expressive iteration into the graveyard? Dual shot? <laughs> That's cheeky. Yeah, dual shot looking kind of medium right now. Let's yeah. See this, this could be... Are we going to go petty thefting? It does utilize all of your mana for the turn. Okay, so bounce. Okay, so this is fun. So you bounce the Sky Cup Operation, you get a 4-4, which mm -hmm. can trade with that, which can trade with the Hamlet Vanguard currently. Get your Phoenixes back. Do you want to attack with your Phoenixes? It looks Hell like yeah. the answer is yes. So now we're kind of playing this. Does he want to attack with both? Does he just want to attack with one? Does he want to hang steady? Oh. Looks like he's just going to hang steady. Well, and, and I like, I, I, I look, <laughs> do you know who you're working with here? Yes, yes. Okay, and I, I'm in favor. <laughs> I'm in favor of hanging back on defense, and here's why. Compare the hands. Yes. Takahashi's hand has Faithless Looting in hand in the graveyard. Crackling Dick to draw a card, it shoots. Ox of Agonis in hand that you can hard cast or discard via Faithless Looting and bring back. So as far as the long game is concerned, it's mega. Actually, let me let me change this advantage bar. It's mega advantage Takahashi. Oh yeah, I was about to say, but Cedric, the advantage bar says, no, 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 you just- I fixed it. <laughs> I fixed like a it. spot right now. We're good now because now we got a 9-4 <laughs> Crackling Drake. We're not in a huge rush to do much of anything because, oh, by the way, Arya has no cards in hand. Yeah. None. This is, this is a Coco or Bust point in this matchup for Arya. Oh my gosh. He's just assembling his flying creatures once again, like he did in the first game, and still has options, still has stuff to do. Fight this looting, got the dual shot there, you can ping something down. So, yeah, the world is the current reigning world champion's oyster at this point. Yeah, Takahashi gonna sacrifice his fabled passage. Look like he's come up with a line that he's happy with here. Might, might be time for the dual shot to finish off this Esper Sentinel, a bit of an annoyance that creature is. Mm. It's just irritating, isn't it? It's like, oh, it's a 1-1, one, one, it's fine, whatever. But no, it, it keeps getting cards, so it needs to get out of here. So bye-bye to you, dear little Esper Sentinel. Skyclave Apparition is uh, the recipient of the other point of damage, but that doesn't do anything. Talia's Lieutenant, it's a good card most of the time, but not right now. Yeah, just dead average right now. I, I would argue it's not even a very good draw step, and this is kind of the issue, right? It's because we've worked ourselves into this long game where mm -hmm. they're just not the best draw steps. You attack like this, okay, sure, I'm happy to do some chumping. My 10-4 can trade with your 6-6. Six, six. You can do this double block 4-4 four, four, and 3-2 there. However however you want to slice it, if you're Takahashi, you can do and know that, hey, my opponent is playing off the top of their deck, so I have perfect information on what's going on. I mm -hmm. have an Ox of Agonis in my hand. I have an Arclight Phoenix that's going to the graveyard that I can reassemble at some point. So everything, again, is looking good. And if you're Takahashi, you say, I'll take five because it's two hits with Crackling Drake, right? It's a yeah. 10 power creature. So I don't even need to chump block or trade with that card. Faith is looting here for Takahashi. Gonna take a look at a few more cards, send some to the bin. Is it time to ditch Ox of Agonis? It sure is. And Bless Bolt. Gonna take care of Skyclave Apparition. Another 4-4 four, four hits the battlefield here. Yeah, this is an example of an Izzet player. This is an <laughs> Izzet player who came ready to beat Selesnya humans. This is uh -huh. exactly what this is, because you could tailor your Izzet strategy to beat other Izzet decks, right? Depending on what you think people are going to bring to the tournament. Um, if you assume that Selesnya humans is going to be the most played deck or a very popular deck here this weekend, <laughs> you build your Izzet Phoenix deck that looks like this. A lot of spot removal, crackling drakes that trade to those Hamlet vanguards. You saw in the sideboarding, he brought in a swath of removal spells mm -hmm. and interaction and and boarded out a very powerful card in dragon's race chandler because it's not about that he doesn't mm -hmm. need that to win the game now you got phoenix coming back from the graveyard gonna get you for 16 and th this is about as one-sided as it can get i agree with you very much there cedric as sakahashi obliterates aria crumpton and Dani's board and picks up the victory two and oh he's in his wheelhouse here is it and yuta sakahashi is just like i don't know peanut butter and jelly cedric <laughs>